Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, Team I Fix It All, uh, part three of uh, four TFI ignition systems here. We left off on uh, PIP pinout differences, profile ignition pickup. So what I mean by that for note to self is uh, don't be overly concerned if you see um, two PIPs that are color coded differently, meaning notice the disorientation of the colors of con the conductor colors and how they arrive inside this rubber block okay don't concern yourself too much with that everything will be just fine interesting I got a white check mark on this one so that hopefully will test good um, then there's this kind here which is all black uh, don't concern yourself with it don't worry too much about it uh, you'll just have to for troubleshooting purposes realize that the conductor that's black with a white stripe is most likely going to be your black lead we're going to get to that in a minute all right, so here's something that really ground my gears one day. I wanted to know what was inside here years ago, and this is nothing more than just a rubber block that holds the female spade terminals in a molded case format. But as a result of being curious, and uh, this is how they mount, by the way, They just mount by a screw here and a screw here. I don't have the other screw installed. Um, as a result of my getting curious one day, I started chipping away to find out what's in there. And what I found was kind of disturbing. And this is mostly for, and if you're watching one day in the future, Scanner Danner, this might answer an old question you have. Hang tight while I put it up on my laptop. Kill this light. Ah. So here's me uh, years ago chipping away at that. And here's a photo of what I found. It's all the rubber parts right there that I removed and then what I discovered and I wonder if I could zoom in on that yeah here's what I want to point out guys the black wire comes into this metal bracket and it's CAD welded and then right next to it a bare wire is CAD welded to a female terminal in other words these three conductors come from the Hall effect sensor and transition into female spade terminals but the black wire is interrupted let me close that and take a look at this one. There we go. And that's where I'm pointing out my problem. All right, so what does this mean? Um, from a technical perspective. What it points to is some of those resistance checks where they were asking us to uh, check and make sure we got a good ground from here and there and assuming everything's installed together and the distributor and all this, that and another. But according to our documentation, H6 is a ground. Got a lot of fuzzies in there. 
H6 is pin 6 down low. Um, H6 is ground. And so is that. Um, the black lead, ground. What Scanner Denner was trying to do one day was run this ignition module with jumper wires going from here into here on the ignition module and then he would have the chassis harness hooked up like so and he thought he could do some points of testing and what he discovered was he couldn't get the engine to spark until he provided a ground from the metal backer plate over to the case of the distributor and why that was disturbing him was he said, well, I remember that wasn't always the case. He remembers that he used to be able to test one and it was just kind of flopping in the wind over here with three jumper wires coming into the profile ignition pickup module and he was getting spark. I think this is a manufacturing nuance, meaning that some of these ignition modules have continuity from pin 6 to the metal backer plate and some do not. Um, I've tested here and I think I only found three that do. This is also a ground terminal and I can test that right now. I'll just get it on beep. Make myself some room here. Watch it make a liar out of me. Oops. Oh, that one ain't gonna work. Actually, that's a good example to use for later. Nothing there. There we go. Alright, so I've got continuity from pin 6. To D1, H6 to D1. Let's see if that one that self destructed has continuity. These aren't exactly easy to get to with just regular. Okay, that one does. There are tests where we're looking for continuity from. pin 6 to the metal backer plate and some have it and some do not check all your ground readings I was pretty surprised when I ran across this because I don't know how many manufacturers are doing this. I would expect to have continuity from pin 6 to the metal backer plate and to here. It's like this is an isolated ground plane in some instances. Let me check this last one here because I think the ones that work might be bubble wrapped. Oh, there we go. Check this out. This one from pin 6 
to the metal back backer plate has continuity. If I can get on it. And to D1. This is D1 to H6. H6 to metal backer plate. And metal backer plate to D1. All So this one is definitely different from these guys here. I'm going to have to remember that for when I verify this stuff later. I don't want to get sidebarred, but I wanted to show you that if your particular resistance checks are not panning out when it comes time to toning to this metal backer plate, don't give up on your ignition module yet because it might be designed in such a way to where it depends on the profile ignition pickup black wire to be bonded to the distributor. So that's where I'm going to get to my point. Um, this black wire right here, turn that light on, this black wire back in the old days I would have expected it to be a home run to a terminal. The red lead, home run to a terminal. The green lead, a home run to a terminal. And some of them I actually have marked. Doesn't matter, but yeah, here's one. Inside the rubber, it's laid out black, red, green. So that's black, that's my red, and that's my green. But what I didn't expect was this black wire would be stripped back and be CAD welded to the metal bracket. This is an entire metal bracket in uh, submerged in rubberized heat sink material. This black wire is CAD welded to the metal bracket and then there is another conductor that in a separate location is CAD welded from the backer plate, the metal backer plate, to the terminal. The reason why I bring this up is what I discovered inside this hull effect right here. What I discovered inside there was that the black wire was disconnected. Because I was troubleshooting this Hull effect, stator assembly. This black wire was no longer attached to the metal backer plate. And this bare one was. So that was my fault as to why I didn't have spark. This black conductor was not. It comes from the hull effect sensor up here. Understand that I just chopped off all three wires right at the base of this thing. Um, and I guess I could have continuity tested through this to see if I had continuity to here. And that's probably what caused me to dive in because I probably had no continuity from this terminal lug up through to the black wire and I found my open circuit. So let's be clear on a couple of things. The way the ignition module and the hull effect gets its ground, its reference ground, can differ based on how dependent the ignition module is on the hull effect sensor. Yeah. I, I'm not confusing myself. I know what I'm saying, but 
it's complicated. These things should have a dependable ground plane independent of the hull effect, the, the, the pip sensor. But depending on how these are manufactured, they may depend on this device here being bolted to the distributor. That's how it gets its ground. The black wire, the black wire of the hull effect device is physically bonded to the metal ears. Those metal ears are bolted to the distributor. And if these connections are corroded or dirty, or there's a fault with the black conductor, you're never going to get a ground signal for spark, either by way of the uh, PIP assembly or the ignition module. So, that's what I've noticed. Uh, let me pause while I think of my next bullet point. Okay. We're going to pause right there and pick back up. Hang tight.